Uh, good morning, my friends. It is so good to see you all or see the emojis and your good mornings and greetings. It's good, 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 good to see you. Uh, a couple of announcements for this morning. Communion again, and you can consider communion every Sunday, whether wherever we're meeting, we will be gathering and sharing God's meal. So bread, cracker, wine, grape juice, Christ is present in, with, and under this meal, as Luther would say. Um, another worship announcement. In the scripture readings, I'm taking a couple of scripture readings and I'm changing them on you. Um, I'm doing Psalm 23, Psalm 100, and the gospel lesson, because that's what we're going to preach on. So, that is the worship announcements I have. We're going to have fellowship hour after worship on Zoom, and that link is on the Facebook page that you can find, and also on the e-news that LaVon sent out earlier. If you need that link and you want to join for the Zoom coffee hour, fellowship hour, um, not even a fellowship hour, fellowship 15 minutes, stop by, say hello, check in, see each other's beautiful faces. So there we are, that's after worship. So about 1045-ish, but... There we go. Uh, we will begin our worship together, and that is with thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life, and let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk with certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before I continue with the first reading, I do want to give a word of thanks for Carl, our minister of music who recorded two of the songs that we listened to in our prelude. Uh, he, he recorded them and sent them to me so I was able to play them for us. And I don't know about you, but it quieted my heart and it 
made me feel one step closer to all of you in that way. So, first reading for this day it comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day they spent much time together in the temple and they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second psalm, the second reading, the psalm, one of the psalms for this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And the second reading that I chose for this morning, or the second psalm, which I'm putting in place of the second reading, is Psalm 100. And I read this psalm in our 10 at 10s during the week, when some writings uh, from my friend Jim were uh, shared and he talked about this psalm. And when I read the psalm, I realized it fits so well with the other texts that were here and the theme of Good Shepherd Sunday. So Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his people. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading for today comes from St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pastures. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, my friends, I have, I have two confessions 
to make, and by that I don't mean peace, but I do mean peace, but I have two confessions. Two confessions that I need to confess. I guess that's what confessions are. The first of all, first one is I, I don't have it all together. No, I know. Shocking, I know. I don't have it all together. Actually, I shared a picture on the Facebook page of what my inner soul feels like so many days. Hair everywhere, and it's beyond just needing a barber. Because that, if they say the eyes are the windows to the soul, well, the hat for the eyes, which would be my hair going everywhere, might give you just a little bit of a glimpse. So that's the first confession. And the second is that I am so glad that we have a shepherd. I am so glad that we have a good shepherd. I am so glad that we hear words like, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I am so... <laughs> I don't know what I would do if I didn't have the shepherd. That's my confession. I don't have it all together. Some days, like you, I'm sure, some days we fake it really well. Others days, I just can't even bother faking it because everybody knows you fake it. I don't have it all together, and I am glad that we have a good shepherd. I look for a guide, and I look for a destination. I look for a guide, and I look for a goal. And today, the gospel lesson reminds us that Jesus, our good shepherd, is both. We have we have a God that in Jesus Christ calls us, and it says we know his voice. He calls us, and not only does he call us, but he is the guide and he is the goal. He says, I am the gate, and I am calling you and giving you, and I am the way. I am a good shepherd. No, I am the good shepherd. Shepherd, And I tell you what, on days like today, days like the last couple of months, the days in which we will go on, I saw a great post the other day that said, you know, January had 31 days, February had 29 this year, I think. Uh, March, you know, had 30, 31, 34, 35, 50, 60, 70. March had about 80 days, and April's gonna, well, April had more than that. I mean, I even forgot which month we were in there for a second. April had, um, had you know, about 300, 800, and then May, May will be a couple of years. But you know what I'm, you know the feeling, you know the feeling that you're like, I don't have it all together. And what I need is a good shepherd. I need a guide. I need someone who will lead me. I need someone who will take me by the hand and walk with me through the darkest valley. And it says, I shall fear no evil for you are with me. But if I'm honest, if I'm, if I, if I'm honest, I do get afraid. I am fearful. I am scared. And so I need the voice. I need the voice that calls me. I need the voice that beckons me. I need the guide that will lead me because it gets scary. But we have a good shepherd. Psalm 100 
Psalm 100 reads like this. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. A little later, enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Know that the Lord is God, and it is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. These texts that we have in front of us, this holy word, this scripture, reminds us that we have a good shepherd, reminds us that we are created and God's breath is in us and we are God's people. But God also says that we're sheep, which I always find interesting because um, God and Christ, I believe, they refer to us as sheep. I don't think it's because they're cute and fluffy. I really wish that was it. I really wish it was because I see a stuffed animal sheep and I go, oh, they are so cute. They are so wonderful. And God thinks that. Yes, God loves us and God thinks we're wonderful. God thinks we are beautiful. But the image of the sheep, I don't believe, is because of that. The image of God's children, that's one thing. The image of being sheep, that's a whole nother thing. Text study. I was gathered with all of our, uh, the pastors of the cluster on Zoom. And one of the pastors who had worked with sheep said, you know, sheep are the dumbest animal I have ever been around. And what's interesting about sheep is that you, uh, uh, someone can walk in and they can grab a sheep and that sheep can be making all kinds of screaming noises, all kinds of, ah, 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 you know, I mean, basically you say like, don't follow me, as, there, as, the, as this uh, thief is coming in to take the sheep. And the walks and making all kinds of scary noises. And the other sheep, you would think they would flee, you think they would run away. According to my source, they said no. The sheep would just follow that other one. Which reminds me we need a good shepherd. We need a guide and we need a protector. We need someone who beckons us and leads us in this world. I am so glad we have a good shepherd. I am so glad it's Jesus Christ. I'm so glad because I do not have it together. I, I get here on Sunday morning and I set the camera up and I hope it works. That's the first prayer of this morning. Please, God, let the Wi-Fi be strong. That reminds me, tomorrow is May 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the Wi-Fi be strong. But I have entered into a time, we have entered into a time that my prayers have changed, but they've also deepened. I have entered into a time, we've entered into a time where I have noticed my prayer life strengthening. We've entered into a time, into a, a moment of history, which we don't know how long it'll be. But there is something about how we gather in this way. There's something about how we gather as the world. There's something about how we come together in an odd, strange bizarre and holy way that see it reminds me of a way it reminds me of the first reading of the book of acts when they came together and they had all things in common now we might not have all things in common with with uh, stuff possessions and we know that we know that there are people that are hungry there are people that are hurting there are people that are trying to fill their refrigerators because it's empty so we know that we know there's that 
disconnect. The, the, there is the haves and the haves nots. We know that. And in the same breath, we come together in this common way. We hold all things in common because in a way that we've never experienced before, we are in the same boat. We are in the same waters. We hold things in common. We know the fear that exists in our hearts. When I look and I see these people going, I say to these people, look at that, I'm already drawing a line. When I see those who are very afraid storming the Capitol and demanding that doors be flung open, I have to stop and realize that it's out of fear, it's out of desperation, and even if I disagree, we are in the same boat because we are trying to figure out how the next day will come. And so I have to lift them as I lift us up in prayer. I don't have it together. There are some days that I am happy I can figure out how to turn on the camera. And I pray again that that works. I am, I am so thankful that we have the shepherd we have. Now, what's interesting is at the end of this gospel lesson, in the end of the gospel of the end of the reading, let me find it again. This is what Jesus says. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I'll read that again. I came so they may have life and have it abundantly. John has a strange thing. The Gospel of John has a strange practice. There, there are times that when he wants to make a point, he'll repeat himself even though it's redundant, which is redundant for me to say repeating itself because redundant. Anyway, the Gospel of John says Jesus came so that we may have life and we may have it abundantly. Earlier on in the Gospel of John, John says, God poured out grace upon grace. We were given life and Christ came so that we may have it abundantly. God poured out grace upon grace. It's just as if we are sheep and we need to hear this message again in the same sentence. Poured out grace upon grace. Just one share of grace wasn't enough. God was pouring out grace upon grace. Christ came that we may have life and we may have it abundantly. What I love about the image of the good shepherd when Christ says, Come, follow my voice, enter the gate... Christ does not say that the pasture is only so big, that there's only so, mount, uh, so many people that can fit in it. That pasture is humongous. That circle keeps growing and people keep coming in and Christ calls everybody to come through into that pasture. Grace upon grace so they may have life and have it abundantly. You see, our God doesn't work in the way that some people can have it and some people cannot because God came for us all to have life and have it abundantly. And we are called together as the community of Christ to make sure our neighbors are okay, to make sure our neighbors have enough, to make sure that those we know have enough. So this is my invitation to you. If you're watching this and you, you don't have enough, if you're trying to figure out, no, the video hasn't froze that I have. Um, I get... This is where
This is where it really gets me, where it hits my heart. When, when we know that there are people whose refrigerators are empty, So, um, if you are in, so if you are in that spot, I'm just taking a moment to get a breath so I can continue. If you are in that spot, call the office, call Yvonne, call me, and let us know. We are in this together. Read the chapter of Acts. Read that, that first lesson again. We are... We hold all things in common and we know. So if you are in need, call us, get a hold of us. Along with that, for those of us who know the feeling of having life and have it abundantly and have been blessed in particular ways, I would ask that you would call Levon or I'm gonna set up, um, in our online giving, uh, you can set up different, um, different subject or different heading uh, memos. You know, I'm completely. I don't have it together, but I'm going to set up after church uh, the drop-down menu where you can designate where you would like a particular offering to go. And our council last time we met, we decided. As you know, this is the first Sunday of the month, and the first Sunday of the month when we are normally gathered in this place, we have, a, we have community giving where we give to a particular organization, we give to a particular need for that month. We have decided that for the next couple of months, we are, our community giving is to give to the pastor's discretionary fund, and that is a fund that allows me to give people f money for food, money for an electric bill, money for money to make it, to make sure that the ends meet. And so we are going to give you a way that you can give to that fund. It's so crucial. I've heard stories about refrigerators being empty. And for someone who can open the pantry and say the words, oh, I got nothing to eat. And that ain't the truth. I got so much to eat. I, I have the luxury to say, oh, that meal doesn't sound good. I'm going to have another. And I, I'm very thankful for that. And we know that there are those who don't have that. Our good shepherd calls us, our good shepherd guides us, and our good shepherd sends us to do the work in the world. God pours out God's grace, grace upon grace upon grace. And he gives us life that we may have it abundantly. And then we get to be that voice of Christ in the world. Amen. So before we continue with the Apostles' Creed, I just have to say, I am... Um, at Tech Study, I was joking. There's, a, there's another graphic that's been shared out there. You know, there's a few of them that says,
boom, all of a sudden your pastor's a TV evangelist. And I joked with my pastor colleagues that I said, I feel like that because it seems like in the last four sermons, through, somewhere in there, I tear up. And I'm like, <laughs> um, this means a lot. So um, I joke about that, but you know it hits right here. So. Our service continues with the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, he ascended into the heavens, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the, communion, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. When we say that confession... I would like you to go back later and read that confession of faith again and notice those things like creator of heaven and earth. I believe in the communion of saints and the holy Catholic church. That holy Catholic church, it's the small c, it's the church universal, the God that pulls us all together as, and we hold all things in common. We continue with the prayers of intercession, the prayers of the people. So uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Encourage the work of teachers, professors, Mentors, advisors, and faculties at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmer markets, for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries in our congregations. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, today I pray for Milo. I pray for his daughters. I pray for Hazel and her son and son-in-law. I pray for Gary and Nisi. I pray for Jenny and Chris's family as they mourn. I pray for those in our congregation and those in our community that are trying to make ends meet. God, I know that you hear what's in our hearts and that which we lift up to you. I would ask that you would lift up prayers in your box and as you lift up prayers 
with emojis. We know that God hears them as the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. pray for Rick. I pray for Jerry. I pray for teachers. I pray for lunch school workers. I pray for Rain. I pray for Margaret. I pray for all those who are struggling to stay at home. I pray for those who are staying at home and are in unsafe circumstances. May they find a way to reach find help and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And we share the peace with one another as you send emojis up and peace be with you. And as we share the peace, I remind you that we will be sharing at the table of the Lord as we share Eucharist together. I would ask that if you don't have your elements, if you don't have bread and wine, cracker, grape juice, water, if you don't have them in front of you, that you would get them at this time. The peace of Christ be with you all. Always. As a reminder, our offering is found online at Zion's Facebook page. There is a giving tab at the top. Later today, you'll be able to find that drop-down menu as I add that um, memo option. You are also welcome to send your offering in uh, to the church office, church address 720 Jefferson Street, Oregon City, Oregon 97045. And you can find that address on the website as well, but you can send that way in as well. I do want to give a word of thanks for your generosity. People in our congregation and outside of our congregation, the way that you have given and the way you have shown support for this ministry, for Zion Lutheran, I, I give you thanks. Our council gives you thanks. You've read it in the newsletter, but I also want to lift that up because we, we're in a culture that we don't talk a lot about money, and I want to give you thanks for giving in that way. I know you give in so many ways, but financially to help the church, it is a blessing. It is grace upon grace, so thank you. So our service will continue now with the meal, with communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take it, eat. This is my body, it is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup, it is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these gifts of wine and bread, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and to be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. So gathered together in one spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before we share in the gifts of Christ. I, I want to I highlight something. One experience for me that just happened, and this, this reminds me that we are gathered here in this place together as the body of Christ, because as I was finishing the communion liturgy, as I was getting to the point where I invite us to say the Lord's Prayer together, I expected to hear it from the sanctuary. And for a moment it got me again. But it reminded me that we are together. And we are together in this meal. And so now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. This is the body of Christ. It is broken for you and the blood of Christ. It is shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. 
Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God blesses us and sends us in mission for the world. So a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, before we begin. Oh, I tell you what. A couple of announcements before I give you the benediction and the blessing and the dismissal. So um, our 10 at 10s continue, 10 o'clock. You'll find me live streaming on Facebook. Please join us as Bob Hargett calls us the tenors. I love that. I thought Carl would like that as well. Blessings tenors as we gather at 10 at 10. Um, and then Wednesday we gather for our Zoom Bible study in Philippians. We continue as we move on. You're welcome to join us if you haven't gathered us, if you, if you haven't been with us before in that way. You're still welcome to come. That link is found on Facebook as well. Um, again, a highlight that I will make that uh, change in tithely in the online giving with a memo that you, might, you can give to the discretionary fund to help those who are in need. Again, if you are in need, give our office a call. Reach out and let us know because we hold our things we are in the common boat, and we're together. I think that's the announcements I have. So we will have, um, you'll find others on the Facebook page, and then tomorrow, of course, 10 at 10. So receive this blessing. Oh, we are gathering, Zoom-wise, Zoom, Zoom -wise, we are gathering after worship. So you can find that link, and just to say hi if you want to stop by for a little bit of fellowship time. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. So go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
Peace be with you. I will see you or see some of you in the Zoom room. I'll see others 10 at 10. Blessings be upon you. And I am so glad you are here with me today. May your day be full of joy, kindness, and grace. Amen.